It has been 21 years since a commercial plane went supersonic, 31 years since we last built two nuclear reactors in a year, and 51 years since we last ventured beyond low Earth orbit. Hard problems like these cannot be solved with SAS or with one more app. During its glory days, software was, in fact, glorious. It revolutionized the physical world and created a new digital world from scratch. Software fundamentally changed almost every industry from delivery to gaming to payments and beyond. Companies that were not able or not willing to modernize were just killed off. And with great power comes great profitability. Companies like Google and Facebook and Amazon and Netflix became some of the biggest companies in the entire world. Software was cool and software had won. But around the time of COVID, the tides started to turn. Software companies stopped doing new innovative things and basically just started going after smaller niche markets using the same technology that already existed. You saw the rise of vertical SaaS startups, which basically means software as a service to service tiny little markets like dog walkers or funeral homes. Many software companies even just focused on serving other software companies, which isn't a bad idea because there were so many of them, but it was the start of software eating its own tail. And then the AI boom happened. You saw the rise of these large language models, which unequivocally were an amazing use of software, totally bucking the other trends that we're talking about. And that sounds great, but with AI, some people believe that the end of SaaS is near. And the logic is simple. If AI can make it easy for anybody to write software, what is the moat that prevents other people or just Chamath Balayabatiya from copying your software for dog walkers? With AI, software is at risk of eating itself alive. Of course, ambitious entrepreneurs still want to start companies, but they recognize that building in SaaS today is building on a foundation of sand. Both founders and investors are looking for more solid ground, and they're finding it by going after the hard problems that are facing society today. Three billion people have never used the internet. Fossil fuels are running out fast, maybe in the next 50 years. 42% of the bridges in the United States are more than 50 years old, and the power grid experienced seven and a half times more disruptions in 2020 than it did in 2000. The world is working hard to improve these things, but unfortunately, we're just not working fast enough. And when you don't move fast enough in today's world, you actually regress. But hard problems are still solvable problems, and somehow now they're actually safer to go after. Silicon Valley is slowly remembering that you actually need a defensible moat in order to build a sustainable long-term public business. You need to find earned knowledge, or in Naval Ravikant's words, you need to give society what it does not know how to get yet at scale. Well, society knows how to build software now, but they don't know how to build net new technology for the world, which is the domain of deep tech. And I believe that that's where the future is, out at the frontier, pushing physics and chemistry and biology to the limits, trying to create a new wave of infrastructure that powers the next age. The age of SaaS is over, but deep tech is here to stay.